So, <laughs> 10 minutes Q&A. Let's go. Can yes. I start? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, one of the things I got out of Cynthia's presentation is what really interesting is the how all of the different cultures you went to, how much the local culture influenced the education and how they look at the education. Do you have, can you say anything more about yeah. that thing? That they, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like, for instance, Chinese culture is quite um, chemical critical. Wait, um, what do you <laughs> Chinese culture. <laughs> you can look at me. Uh, so, <laughs> and I often think like, uh, I, I think, um, yeah, I think I started thinking that when I was young because uh, when I would come to Hong Kong, my cousins are there. And I know that my family can be quite critical and so they my view of Chinese culture. Um, and that Chinese kind of share criticisms and, and love through criticism. Um, but just kind of want people to be perfect in a way. Um, so then when I would see my, my cousins trying to be perfect and um, um, taking like Mandarin lessons, cooking lessons, English classes, whatever, everything outside of the school day, I started to realize like, oh, okay, that connects. And so when I travel, I kind of see that things connect. Like for instance, when I, um, another example is when I, uh, my friends in like Eastern Europe, they have quite a different uh, perspective on like life. And the way they, they're, they keep, um, many of them tell me that they're, they're quite pessimistic sometimes. Their parents like grew up in the communist era. They grew up when they were young. They wanted to access Western education. They're only like and in Bulgaria, the only access to Western um, the world is like through watching Animal or not, what's it called Captain Planet on the Cartoon Network. Well, that's so like a good cartoon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that was like they wanted. They grew up dreaming of being in Cartoon Network. Um, so that I, I think that's just how I like, view everything when I when I do travel. It's kind of like what qualities I have in education and why, and a lot of that why is related back to the culture. Um, I think the strengths of every culture kind of bring out a success in the education system. Um, obviously, some have more successes than others, but I think a lot of the successes can be not like replicated exactly, but adapted into other systems to kind of improve um, the educational quality and this new generation of young people becoming like the politicians and the corporate execs and entrepreneurs of our world. Did you want did you want me to say anything specific? No, no, that, that's good because I want to play it all together. So no. because that goes into what Mark said about the how our creative thinking is viewed in the in schools, but I've noticed here and probably in other places as well. And that might be a teacher problem, or it might be a systemic problem, which in the long run takes it back to the cultural problem. It could be a cultural problem at, at the root, uh, how creative thinking is looked at. For me, when I look at Malaysia from like from my perspective. So if I summarize it into one word, it's separation. It's the opposite of, of what Maggie uh, talks about. It's like everything is separated on, on all levels. And that would be probably one of the reasons why creative, creative thinking is not so valued. Which ties back to the first speaker, which is why something like that would be a very valuable way of showing them. And, and the, I think the I point actually find that the arts integration, even when the teachers take their students on a field trip, once a year field trip, to Barrett's Cultural Center to have one day where they get to do art, drama, and dance with teaching artists. They get to see a whole other side to these students. That one who wouldn't sit still has been just driving them crazy for the last three months is suddenly amazing, is suddenly performing, is suddenly answering every question and, and, and and completely attentive, and so there's they so experiences let them see that and can shift that, but they won't see it without the opportunity. Exactly. But, but then, for instance, um, the in the adult world, if you like, real world, art and all these things are separate. That's, right. that's, that's the thing. That's, that's the cultural, cultural problem. problem. <laughs> it's a cultural problem everywhere. It's not just. I mean, you don't have, for example, in America. You know, scientists, you know, dancing around and so on. You, you don't, you don't have that. I mean, uh, when they grow up, right, things get compartmentalized, and art gets into basically 
uh, you know, uh, into its own compartment. So it, it's very difficult to expect people to, you know, to put everything together when they don't see that in real life. That, that's exactly why America is sinking, because it's like that. But I think also the you can see it happening more and more with the way technology moves and with the when you look at people who are pushing things the furthest in their fields, they are oftentimes the people making connections across fields. And I think you can find it. It's most. It's more a a um, taking those thing, those identifying them and and um, and and magnifying. Them. Magnifying those moments and calling attention to them, and then if you're aware of them, you will find more of them. You will make your own connections, and so making room for that. It's but it's definitely culturally. Uh, we live in boxes. We think in boxes. We're schooled in boxes, and our information goes is given to us in these tight little compartments, unless you take on a different style of doing so. I think this divide between art and Technology is kind of one sided because because if uh, if you go to uh, engineering college you also study some humanities. But if you go to humanities college you don't actually study science. True. Yeah. Because when I was in college I graduated from the Institute of Technology and I used to study humanities a lot. I I even studied a course called Art and Technology. So you see these kind of courses in uh, engineering uh, schools, but you don't see the opposite kind happening in our schools. I don't think that's actually, you do. Actually, I, I, yeah. I disagree, actually. You know, um, I don't know about the yeah. Because if you go to the U.S., we basically have requirements to fulfill. Mm -hmm. like, even if you're doing like a humanity major, you have to do science and calculus. So, I mean, it's it's a calculus. Depends on the school. I, <laughs> I, mean, actually, I avoided the math. Science. I went to school where I didn't have to take the notes. Yeah, actually, yeah. depends on the school. Yeah, actually, most of the schools. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think it was, it was a, I mean, for me, it was a, for the university, I actually asked them, I said, you know, I'm, I'm doing English uh, in Mandarin's English literature, uh, but I, I did operational statistics and computers as well. They, they just explained, they said, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with, you know, not allowing you to do science in a, in a humanity type of your the other way around. It's just not practical. We have, it's, it's impossible to put a timetable where you can attend both. They just said that. Um, uh, just tie. Just a yeah. very Sorry. quick. In terms of, uh, I, I understand everything that you're discussing, but I believe what uh, she had to say in terms of challenging the perspectives. If you bring out these sides of children, I, I work in a very new school. so. Uh, I started, uh, I'm, I'm working with a lot of kids in terms of dance, in terms of drama, in terms of singing, um, music, and I'm very involved with the dance teacher who's in my next cubicle. So what is interesting, what you just said now, the kids that you say, the teachers come and come, I'm also viewed as a school counselor. So all the kids that are referred to me as problematic behavior or something, something they're the ones who are the best in all the kids. <coughs> So what happens in like the staff room is I conduct like a dance audition and I put out my list and the teachers are like, oh, can dance up? <laughs> so it's like, and I make a big deal out of it. I say we're going to put up a dance production and all. Suddenly these kids are viewed in a different way. Or the art teacher brings out her artwork, it's displayed in the staff room because it's all has to be so bent and worthy. Everyone's admiring, oh, who did that? Or that, who can draw art? <laughs> so suddenly this child, they come into the stuff, oh my god, the day takes are so difficult. You know, Dixon can draw, you know. You hear something different about the child and the way you frame the child and view the child and treat the child. When you see the child, oh hi, oh, they're coming the child. You know, it, it, it's so important bringing out the arts. It might not be something we get professional or anything. It just boils down to how adults actually interact and the teachers teach, you know, how the child gets labeled in the school. So that's that's why I think that's one very positive thing okay, about yeah, what, what she said, which is true. Um, let me try to tie some of the thoughts together before I let you, let you go. Um, so, how's everybody feeling? <laughs> Good. Oh, this is cool. It's, it's, it's close to 10. Again, I apologize. Any cap always end up dragging pretty late. Uh, energy levels are a bit low for such crazy thinking and talking about but here is where I would like to just consolidate 
what's what's happened to this point? Um, by the way, it's entirely chance. So you think that there was a theme, or you know, I crafted this. No. Uh, these three speakers approached me independently. Uh, I was busy to actually like, reach out to anybody, but they just emerged out of the ether and said, hey, you, you, think you can, I want to talk about this. I was like, oh yeah, I know you, that's good. Uh, let's do it. Then she approached me, I hardly know her, you know, but yeah, you're young, you're doing all this thing. Okay, cool, do it. And then Mark Lee, out of the blue, being ninja and all, was like, I want to give a talk. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, can. <laughs> but somehow or other, I just find it the most bizarre coincidence that we ended up having um, Maggie talking about art. And, and, and for her, it's like creativity is very, very much what she's teaching in, in, in a way, you know, the whole opening the thing. And for her, it's like, like, like what she even just said, you know, I, I just want science and math. She's a very, uh, again, I'm not an educator, I'm not very good with words and stuff, but I would say like, she's very intuitive, creative, almost like, you know, because she's, she's never lost that, that childhood curiosity. And the creative spark. Then you have um, Cynthia, which is kind of like in between worlds, you know. Uh, <laughs> she's a bit of the, you know, the, the, the American education system, uh, that, that freedom and stuff. And then now she's traveling, and then she's seen that oh wow, the whole world, the, the rest of the world's education is not like America. And you know, the, the whole angle of things like just opening up, you know, uh, proposing new experiences about education, uh, understanding of it, and it's just amazing that. She just, even though she's doing all these things and she's like finding out that, no, I want to enable more people and stuff. And then Mark, out of the blue, engineering, science, MIT, Harvard, like totally, I, I can't remember which side of the brain it is. Uh, left brain? Left, left brain, like, right brain, left brain, left. <laughs> you know? but, but he's like, he's like being very holistic. I mean, it, it's, it's very rare to meet. Uh, a very strong left brainer who actually acknowledges the creativity part in, in a way. Uh, and when, when he was telling the stories, it's kind of funny, it's like, the, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it, it was almost like you were, t you were tackling the creativity thing with your engineering type of, uh, a, a viewpoint of like the structure thing. You know, you do the research, you do the studies, and you are really like applying it, see what works, what doesn't work, and then you are, you know, iterating it through very engineering way of things. Whereas Maggie is more like, let's go with the flow, you know? Can you all try stuff? So I just find that if you guys take back something to that, and, and, and this also ties in nicely with what Tala was saying about yesterday's talk, uh, how many people came on your educam yesterday? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm up. Um, he gave a very interesting, interesting uh, presentation about game cloning, and he was just putting up a bunch of slides, and he said that it's not linear. You have to look at all of it, and then go back again, and come back again. I think you might not get it now. In fact, I don't get it right now. <laughs> um, but it's given me a lot of things to think about. Um, and I believe that if you came here thinking that, hey, we're going to come here and uh, we're going to get instructions on how to fix the education system, I apologize. I, I don't have the answer. But this talk, I hope it fires up something in you in terms of like, hey, you know what? <clears throat> We've been, we need to look at things a bit more differently. You know, what exactly is the problem we were trying to solve? Like, like Cynthia, for example, going into all this place thinking that, and myself as well, when, when I went into a refugee school, thinking that, yeah, yeah you know, uh, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to fix things, you know? But instead, <coughs> and what he's bringing up about the uh, open yourself to chance, when I went there and suddenly I realized that, holy crap, they don't need fixing. In fact, they are teaching me how to get things done. You know, uh, she's seeing schools thinking underprivileged, but they are happy, they are joyful. You know, they have adapted. You know, they, because they are out of a system per se. A lot of them are quite independently run. Something that's grossly lost in terms of how when governments are formed and so on, so on, and, and, and governments getting involved in school system. Whereas we are noticing, you know, bits of uh, uh, education structures and stuff which are independent of that like mass produced type of education, really, really flourishing and really, really sparking. So a lot of times people keep on complaining and bitching and whining and say, yeah, the energy system is broken, the energy system is broken. It's not. <laughs> it, 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 the, 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 and, and you know, like, let's come up with solutions. It's all, it's all around us, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's all happening in microcosms, it's happening in all the silos and stuff. We just need to knock our heads together, right? Think creatively, right? Um, think empirically like how he was doing the whole math thing and so on and so forth. 
So, I don't want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> It's just it's a mind map. Um, it's a mind map. You know, there's a lot of dots right now. So again, you know, um, as an interesting moderator who doesn't know what the hell is doing, and you can read really know what the hell I'm doing. It started out as just to frame it for you guys as well. It all started out with me saying that you know what, I'm, I'm a lazy bum. Let's do edu camp. Why am I a lazy bum? It's because I got three young kids. You can't know this story. It all, this is this is really the true story. How this whole edu camp thing starts out. I got three young kids. I'm a lazy bum. I want to learn from the best people on what to do and how to, you know, craft the best education experience, blah, 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 whatever it is. And then from there, it just sparked into something else. Like, it just, like today's EduCamp is just nuts. <laughs> you know, uh, if you have been to the early EduCamp, it started local. It was like, oh yeah, let, let's solve education problem in, 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 in KL. Then it became Malaysia. Then Malaysia became Asia. And then to, tonight, it just went boom. <laughs> <laughs> but take a step back and just check again, like, what are we fixing? What are we trying to fix? You know? Um, and, and here is that, I just want to like, like roll it back again and, 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 and share with you my insights and see whether you all agree with me. I do want to refo prevent boom and I want to just refocus back and just see whether you all agree with me, disagree with me, just because I want to make sure that you all go back with something to think about and then just go, oh, I want the hell to happen, right? Um, The privilege has got no problems with education, generally speaking. What if you have privilege that the well, well off, either financially well off, or they happen to be in developed nations like Finland, or any of the East European, more, more progressive, but generally like wealthy nations. Education is not the, I mean, they have like issues, but we honestly, too. they have minor, uh, like, you know, they, are, they, they, they still pitch, but it's a totally different level. Yeah. It's a bit like America as well, you know? Um, the, 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 you don't came for the screening of the, the movie uh, Waiting, for Superman. Superman. Waiting for Superman and, and I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more and then you see them and then you're like you know uh, you get a glance of the whole range of public schooling and then you're like hey you know what generally speaking most of their public schooling is way better than whatever they have in Malaysia you know but even in Malaysia you have that huge divide if, if, if you've been to international schools or you've heard of international schools and private schools charter schools again when I went to any camp and started studying this it's like it's not, you, you can't just say the education system is broken because it's, it's not, you know? And for me, after doing webcam for almost half a year, and this is something that Cynthia also sort of like found out through her travel. She, 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 she realized that through her travel. Maggie also realized that through solid travel. Um, he figured it out. Is <laughs> 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 to bridge those who can have access to quality education to, uh, sorry, is to bridge those who are underprivileged, who don't have that environment, to get that same level of education as everybody, of equal, of equal education levels. And I'm not talking about no, no child left behind, <laughs> all right? Um, it, it, is, it is embracing custom education. It is embracing inclusive education. It is embracing uh, meritocracy, type of assessment, it is also embracing diversity. Diversity in the sense that, you know, you don't go to you don't go to a school and say, oh, no, why you don't want to be an engineer? Why you don't want to be a doctor? You know, what's, what, what's wrong with being a famous break maker? What's wrong with, you know, being a really, really good janitor? You know, it's, it's process out of thing. If I'm a very good janitor, I can go to a janitorial company and figure out processes to make everybody's jobs easier, faster, you know, uh, and figure out things, things like this. <clears throat> now, that's the challenge that I see. Because underprivileged means no money. And people who know how to make money look at that and say, how to make money? You cannot charge whatever it is. You know? And, and there is the challenge. There, there is the, 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 the tough nut to crack. And, 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 and again, I'm not saying that nobody's doing anything about it. There are efforts, there are initiatives. You know, people are doing the whole creative thinking now to try to tackle this problem. But we need more people, we need more ideas, we need to make more mistakes. You know, um, whether it is to do it out of the goodness of your heart, or whether, if you, <coughs> whether it is to be um, incentivized by, you know, how to make money out of this. Just to throw another idea out, what if, you know, just, 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 just to get the bit of like, the, 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 the brain thing going. Like, 
what if you can have a program in place where it's like you will try to get uh, VCs to invest in the education of the underprivileged and then you give them some sort of exclusive uh, IP rights. If, if from this cluster of kids, something original idea comes up, you own you know, intellectual property for three years and you can capitalize on that idea. Maybe something like that, I don't know. You know? Sorry, King Gates. Yeah, Bill Gates is doing something, like that. And, and, and that was something that he's also uh, exploring very much, much into. Uh, so there's a lot of all these initiatives. I would like you all. I would like to welcome you all to either find an initiative that you uh, feel for, you know, that you can contribute to in any whatever little way that you can. I know that again in Malaysia is a, a different kind of uh, environment ecosystem where it's like most people are just struggling to make ends meet, you know, and, and, and that's where Grab Camp is trying to do as well, just to raise that. Uh, entre entrepreneurial bar, <clears throat> but in the meantime, we're we're seeing like people like Mark Lee, uh, Maggie in this region, who are also just putting their feelers out and stuff. So again, I don't know what the hell I'm rambling about, uh, but I do hope that maybe you all can uh, add to this conversation, add to uh, what we're trying to achieve with Edicamp, try to brainstorm. And by the way, there are a lot of little little projects that uh, the, the the core group of Edicampers are also trying to do. Uh, come speak to us. Uh, I know it's getting very late. Um, join the. How many of you are on the uh, Edicam group uh, on Facebook? I'm oh, sorry, not aware of the Edicam Facebook. Great. Okay, so uh, send me on Facebook and I'll add you guys. I think I just added you. I'm pretty sure I did. I added you to the Edicam group. Ah, oh, that's great. <laughs> so, with that, uh, before Maggie shoots off and everybody goes off, anybody got any more things to add? Final questions? Yes, sorry. I was say something. Like, when you were talking about culture, Culture is part of education. I go to school in the US, I have professors telling me that grades don't matter. So when I come back, I go to school, teachers will ask me in the first place, what's the GPA? <laughs> uh, I think that's something that's wrong. Instead of asking what you learned today, parents at home will ask you, how did you do in your exam? I think that's something that's very wrong, at, at least over here in Malaysia. It's very cultural. Yeah, it's very it's cultural. cultural. It's a kind of local culture. But you can change that, you can change that because now, 30 years of time, you will be asking them questions. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one yeah. thing that individuals can do at all. That's just my thought. And with that, please give a round of applause for all these Thank you, and...